Oké. Thank you. Welcome to this uh, third talk this afternoon by Matthias Baats on Inclusion in Psychology and Determination. Yeah. So it should be uh, the title should have been asked how the innovation, <laughs> but maybe it's a Freudian, Freudian error because from fast cannot be the role because I think in the end this is the seventh uh, uh, the power of seven tools which is the fast <laughs> but however no which is it already starts so yeah so uh, let us first let us first say some word about the complexity issues here in first order cardinality and this is a nice field, at least for people working in it, because contrary to other fields in complexity, uh, well, we can separate the results. And this is quite understandable, as the difference is normally the elementary bound. Uh, this has the advantage that whenever you prove that something is over this elementary bound, or under this elementary bound, it's extremely stable. So whatever calculus, whatever other way of writing, whether you have contractions or not contractions, doesn't matter. Yeah? So, and we see in this trivial example what is the complexity. Here we see the simplest example of something that has a linear proof and a cut, uh, a exponential cut. Proof. So this is a formal definition of what we don't need for. Uh, being elementary, so it is bounded by such a machine. But in reality, we only have to know that the cross over the exponential function. And uh, the important thing is that most of the arguments here are relative arguments. It means you, you use worst case sequences of any kind that you, that you wish to use, and uh, uh, you construct over them the results you wish to achieve. And so we presuppose here that there is a sequence of LK proofs in the uh, connection, negation, universal extension fragment uh, with premix cards which can also be done. The question with the premix cards is a more interesting one because in reality uh, in the Examples from the literature, like Statement or also uh, uh, they are not really uh, Prenix. Uh, the cuts are not really Prenix. But in fact, you can make any proof with uh, non Prenix cuts Prenix by adding further cuts. Uh, this, you can add cuts and it becomes Prenix. So we have such a sequence and we work with it. And uh, the Schütte or Schütte date elimination procedure. Uh, this is a procedure we use to estimate first order cut elimination. This is an interesting thing, and I might ask you as an audience, up to now, I could find nobody who could tell me which is a bound for the usual cut elimination against the style. The bound is extremely bad. There are some, as Pavel Butler, who think that this bound is not even primitive recursive, but of Ackermann class. Nobody ever estimated that. But the one you, it's very bad because it is already non elementary on proposition energy, however you formulate it. So maybe it is not even primitive recursive. So we, we, we find this usually uh, by, by the Schütte or Schütte date uh, method, which is nicely described also in the handbook by Professor Schwiesenberg. Namely, uh, what is the idea of this method? we project. It means we do not move the cards, but we project them on one side. And then we cut them out on the other side. And as it is easy to see, you will always uh, add the height by this, because mm -hmm. one cut climbs up, one could say. And the highest application of this uh, reduced cutting would be on the top, let's say, and so the height is in the surface and double. And by this, if you remove all cuts of the largest size, uh, you will have you will have an exponential jump. And therefore, if you as I say if k quantifies, and it is the only question of the quantifies in the reality, as classic logic projects on both sides, 
um, if you have iterated quantifier blocks k times, and blocks you can eliminate once, you will have a tau of twos up to k. And in intuitionistic logic, uh, the same works, and so I, I, I never have seen who said this first, maybe Peter van der Berg knows it, you can, you can project. But here's a big difference. You have also projected implication. Yeah? So whatever bound you achieve, it will depend on the iterated cuts, implications, and so on, the implication in the iteration. And uh, the main thing what I will tell today is a, a little bit strange fact that if you have an intuitionistic logic in the calculus with, uh, without disjunction, brain x cut, you can eliminate them elementarily. And from that, from the method I use, one can show that I can eliminate cuts in intuitionistic logic without regard of the propositional structure. That's important. That means that there is a very bad elementary function, and this bad elementary part there is for a class with k iterated quantifier, it eliminates the, the cuts in, in a two and a tau of this elementary function, the iteration of this elementary function, k times. And, and this is an, an say, let's say, a little bit curious fact, because, uh, because one would think that if you look at the semantics, so you could go and say, okay, I write now, let's say, Kripke semantics, as a calculus, as a proof theory, which is easily done. And in this calculus, of course, all classic relations will apply. However, now the implication will have quantifiers. So, so the natural prediction would be that it is sensitive to implication, but it is not, as we will see. So the first thing, uh, these are only the calculus, it's not an unusual, unusual one, there's nothing special. Uh, important is only that by this elementary and non-elementary thing, this is such a strong thing that such details, whether I, for example, formulated this multiset or I formulated a set or such, can play in the role. So the main theory is that in, uh, that in fact, in a calculus, uh, uh, my co-author wrote a lot of uh, LI because he believes that LG is a writing error, a typing error. So the editors coming from the fact that the current I looks as G. Mm -hmm. Because from a logical point of view, LI is more, more logical, logical, classic, logical, intuitionistic. But it was kept like that. So, so, uh, so there is an elementary function which allows the elimination of premix cards is over x. So what is the idea? The idea is, is quite, quite a simple one. First of all, we uh, remove, we have premix cards, we remove the whole propositional structure by what? By coding it. By coding it not by initial codes, but by simply a predicate. I take a new predicate and uh, allow axioms to say that the matrix is of quantifier is equivalent to the predicate, and consequently, I reduce the problem to quantified atomic cuts with uh, the additional defining equivalences or defining implications in the antecedent. So, then, uh, uh, so this is exactly the way how, how, how that happens. Uh, I replace them, I replace them part uh, by part. When the matrix is completed, I replace it by this atom. So, then I think about the quantified atomic cuts. And here comes, here's a place where the lack of the OR is important. Because the important thing is that these quantified atomic cuts can be traced on the left side. It means all have only one unchester. As there is no implicit contraction in our left, they all have one unchester up to the axioms. And as they have one unchester, you can, in a certain sense, uh, eliminate these quantified atomic cuts uh, directly. So to say, you could imagine it's like that, like going up to the axioms, looking at the axioms and putting the cut on the other side, like if you jump over that. So, uh, 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 and then, uh, this is very easy. 
the most difficult part comes. The third part is also quite trivial. I eliminate this, uh, this defining implications. How I do that? Uh, I simply replace the defining axioms by, as a defined axiom by the defining matrix. I put it everywhere in the proof. That means the proof becomes bigger, but somewhat. I mean, set of atoms, there's no formulas for that sort of And then I look at the proof. And instead of introducing the implication for the defining, for the defining, uh, for this A implies A, I cut it. Yeah? So now I have a proof, a proof which is cut free, with exception of propositional cuts. And now comes the difficult part. The difficult part is namely the question what does it cost to eliminate propositional? cuts from an otherwise cut-free proof. Oh, that I so, I so wrong. So, uh, so in classic logic, that's not that difficult. How one would argue in classic logic? But would simply say, okay, let's say I have a cut about A and B. Then I project the A and B on both sides. So I have a proof for A, a proof for B, a proof for A stroke B. I cut out the both. I had at least one inference of the end. I have one cut more, so the depth remains the same. So by this, all the cuts would be, uh, so to say, put into pieces, put into pieces uh, which are atomic, and the height would remain. So now, uh, uh, of course, the size would change. The size would be exponential. Now I, I, I remove them and that costs at most another exponential, maybe an exponential, who knows, can be a double exponential, I'm not sure. There is an uh, interesting paper by Urquhart who shows that the elimination of atomic cuts can cause the exponential expands, but I'm not sure. But a double, double exponential at most. So, uh, but in intuitionistic logic, that is not the case. And for a, for a long time, uh, I discussed various approaches where the most natural approach, curiously, would be different uh, from that what I will now explain to you. Uh, and the most natural approach would go like that. You have cut elimination only for propositional cuts. Where you need regularity, let's say, in case of cut elimination, you need regularity for the quantifier. Yeah, because if we instantiate the universal quantifier and they're not regular, the proof will be not a proof anymore. However, now you have no quantifier. So why not forgetting about regularity, making the Gensen procedure, then whatever comes out, you know it's cut free, but you know that you can now bound the subformulas. You have the subformulas. Consequently, there's an elementary function which uh, constructs you a cut-free cut proof. You have these sub-formulas uh, in, the, in the grip on the strong unity. That never worked, unfortunately. I will also say in the end why this is unfortunate. And uh, uh, so, so we will now say, say, uh, say how to do that. And, and the method is, in a certain sense, not difficult. Uh, but it is a little bit unusual in the induction. So the idea is like this. You have, you have let's say, uh, uh, the induction, let me first say where the induction is after. The induction is after the number of subformulas. Yeah? So the size of the set of all subformulas of all propositional count formulas. Because if we need set. And now what you do is the following. For example, you look at the biggest cuts. You select one type of the biggest cuts. Let's say in A implies B, but I can also C and D and so on. They can be of the same size, but not bigger. So, so you select them, and you want to reduce them. Then you have the proof. You have your cut that looks like that. And on the other side, And you cut. So what is what you do is you uh, project this very last cut 
that means you have cut formula. That means it has to come from somewhere. So you can find the proof of this form as usual. However, be warned, contrary to classical logic, further such cuts could be hidden there inside. And these are not caught by the projection. So the cut formula doesn't appear from that part. It only appears in its normal position, one could say. And then you cut out everywhere where this projected cut formula is introduced from the other side. This is the projection and you cut. So what happened now? You <coughs> added one height to that what is here. So if that was the height, you added one height. But now you have to work in that part. Yeah, you have to work in that part. And then uh, and you have to the, the next higher implication in place B you have to reduce. And uh, again you add one height. The important point is you do not double. You add one height, you add one height, you add one height, and that means that in the end uh, you have uh, you have uh, uh, the height, the height, as many as the height, more iterated parts could not be, also the height exponented by the height. Yeah? And then comes the second, and so on and so forth. And, and always, always uh, you can argue this is original, this is original height, and uh, and uh, so and uh, sorry, the height. It is too high. Height square, height square, sorry, not the height square. So and you repeat that, you repeat this, and in the end you get the height square to the height more or less. So it is an elementary procedure. And the important point is that uh, uh, you introduce new cards, but the cards are in the set of subformulas. So the set of subformulas uh, uh, already counts that and it is diminished by this induction. So in the end you have, let's say, triple exponential elimination, more or less, more or less triple exponential. Okay, so, so uh, that is, is the, the thing. And I will also tell why this is unfortunate. It's unfortunate that it does not, does not work the first way, I said. In the first, uh, if it would work, with, uh, because now we can argue like that. Uh, how, to show, how to show that, uh, uh, as I said in the beginning, the cut elimination in general is elementary in the number of iterated quantifiers. One does it like this. One looks at the innermost proposition. So that one, one, one looks, one, one uh, looks at the sorry, not innermost, but the, one looks at the outermost quantifier. Let's say the outermost quantifier stands outside of the cup, on the edge of the cup. Uh, well, let's say the outermost quantifier stands inside of the propositional structure. So what you do, you 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 encode simply this. Uh, this uh, part of the cut formula which starts with the quantifier. The propositional structure remains. By such a propositional elimination, you can eliminate the propositional uh, structure elementarily. Then you reintroduce the cuts. Then you reduce one quantifier. Now there should be a quantifier standing outside. Again, uh, the quantifier is reduced, again you lose the coding, you reduce the propositional part and so on. So after every quantifier comes or before propositional reduction, coding of the quantifier, reduction of the quantifier, propositional reduction, reduction of the quantifier. So uh, this, is a, this is a repeated application of uh, functions like that and the usual function which is due to the uh, to the, the height of the proof which eliminates the quantifiers. By this, uh, you get in fact that for every proposition, so when you have uh, proofs in uh, LQ or LI, where the alternation of the quantifier is limited by K, then you have an elementary function to make this cut free. And this does not, as you have seen, depend on the, on the uh, propositional structure of the cuts. 
And uh, the, the interesting thing is, when we could make the first argument, that is, when we could really argue over the regularity, over the suppression of the regularity, then we could make this argument for any system where cut elimination in the gains of that is possible or anything. Any. Uh, uh, because in a, cer in a certain sense, in a certain sense, uh, the, 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 the projection of the quantifiers is nature that exists everywhere. Yeah? And the elimination of the uh, propositional cuts would then be elementary. So you, in a certain way, so you, you, you could always iterate that. And that would mean that uh, the fact <coughs> practically all uh, uh, logics of whatever kind it is when they have normal contraction and normal beginnings, let's not speak about substructure logic, uh, would have, there would be only the possibility uh, uh, that they, when, when they are sufficiently complex, they are exactly of the complexity of, of classic logic concerning the cultivation. Exactly meaning, of course, uh, in the relation of elementary and not elementary. The difference can be enormous because the function, elementary function, could be, I do not know what. But, uh, but in that respect of elementary and non-elementary, they would all be, all be of, the same, of the same complexity. And so, yeah, this is, this is exactly what I said. And because I forgot to mention, uh, in this argument for the fast elimination of, uh, of the next cuts, there, of course, uh, I could not have four, because I said, if I have four, I cannot trace the uh, quantified propositional cards on the left side. <coughs> but for the second argument, it doesn't matter. So I can have also the same argument that I made here for. And, uh, uh, on, and, and this, uh, this doesn't depend on the function symbols, but it is, it is uh, 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 maybe a, a, an easy corollary or something trivial. Quantified atomic cuts are as complex in cut elimination as any cuts that follow from these coatings uh, in, in general. So, uh, then in, in class, uh, uh, the non prenex cuts are, of course, arbitrary complex, it is trivially seen because you can trivially embed every classical proof in an intentionistic proof of exactly the same shape by adding a double negation to every connective or quantifier. And this is simply so that you push everything what is on the right side in the class, you proof has one negation, on the left side was on the left side has two negation. If you want to introduce something on the right side, you push it on the right side, so it gets two negation. If you push it from the left side, then uh, you make the inference and then push on the left side, so it has one negation. Uh, this is a Kolmogorov of uh, translation. And, and uh, this is exactly making a picture. So if you have a worst case classical proof, you get a worst case sequence intentionistic proof. That's the uh, So uh, then, uh, yeah, this was exactly that. And however, as strange as it seems, uh, also in the right since two years. I could never prove that this result is a fast cut elimination of prenex cuts holds also for intentionistic logic is over. The, the, the method I apply doesn't work. There is nothing that comes to my mind. And one should think, because with or you have this implicit contraction that should have the same strengths as, as classic logic in a certain sense. But I couldn't. So this is one thing. Uh, and another thing is, uh, I said before that making proof Renex, one needs to add additional cards. So there is a question, is there an example, a uh, sequence of classical proof with one Renex card hold, such that the card free proofs are not elementary one? Uh, also, this, this question seems to be weird and useless. Uh, it is not completely so. Because uh, it means that in a, in a certain sense, you can have uh, the real 
uh, the real universal bad position of quantifiers. So this cut would be so strong that however you consider it, uh, it is non-elementary. And now uh, one can construct from such a thing an example is infix cuts, which goes easily. Namely, for example, of the form A implies A, the would be infix cuts. And then we would have uh, the examples where any shift of quantifier, any, any choice of shift of quantifiers would make uh, the example extremely much harder. And this goes, of course, in the beginning of proof theory, because one should not forget that the main error in Herbrand's proof of Herbrand's theorem was the belief that shifting of quantifiers doesn't change the Herbrand discharge. This is the main source of, of error there. And here we see that uh, this would then be the universal example, that there is an example where you cannot shift in any way. Yeah? In all other examples, this might be that they choose a very bad shift, and this is then a big difference, but one could ask, is there a better shift? Maybe there is always a good shift. And this example would show this. Uh, uh, and this. And this is a thing with a non-regular proof that would give this complexity analysis to to uh, much larger classes of logic. Uh, uh, and, and the other thing is, uh, are there elementary bound for the elimination of cut from proofs uh, where all quantifiers in the cut have the same polarity on one side, of course. This is another, another interesting question. A, a more suitable question, and again, you might ask for what it is. It's the following difference between I said that about, uh, let's say, uh, number of quantifiers, the complexity of elimination is the same classically in this situation. But there is a very important difference. The very important difference is that in, in classic logic, you simply can count the quantifier uh, iteration blockwise. It means if, if a quantifier stands inside, then it's a different quantifier because first it is forward, then comes the exist negative, then this counts as one block, one would say. But in the intuitionistic logic, it seems not to be. It seems that that is really the number of quantifier that there is no help. But all this uh, I, cannot, I cannot prove. And this is, of course, a work, work in progress. Let me say in the last two minutes, uh, why, uh, so to say, this, this type of, of, of my work was originally inspired uh, by questions in, in computer science. Yeah? Namely, the main, question was, the main question was why it comes that uh, one should, uh, that it is so effective to scolemize when making the gross form of resolution proofs before making it prenex. And the interesting aspect of these things is that these examples are of course extreme examples. They never occur in the reality. They are very constructed examples. But strangely, in these applied fields, it is very often, it is very often that, that what is what is extremely uh, true is also in the special case true, not in that amount, but this amount we anyhow do not consider who has proofs with more atoms and with more steps than the universe has atoms. But on the smaller scale, the same things happen. Uh, I give an another example for that. So for example, at the beginning, one would believe that, for example, uh, uh, automatic theorem proofing strategies, especially in resolution, which are not complete, uh, it makes no, no, no effect because simply it's not complete anyhow, what can be proved? But the truth is that never ever a strategy or a, a resolution, a way to formalize a resolution worked which was either not complete or, or it, where it was not clear where the classes of this completely unique resolution or such, where you only count with one output. And this strange fact is true. So, so from, for, that, for that point, in automatic theorem proofing, always one proves the completeness of the principle. So they never aim to prove everything. And, and this is in a similar 
similar aspect with this complexity consideration. So in this extreme uh, way as I presented them, they will never occur in practice. However, uh, so to say, reduced forms of that are well occurring. So what is not elementary there might be double exponential, simple exponential here. And that is bad enough. <laughs> Thank you. something classically, you can also prove it intuitionistically for, say, for geometric applications. And so I was wondering, is there maybe, um, since it's sometimes not known whether this transformation from the classical to the intuitionistic theory, or the other way around, oh, wait, that's the right way around. The proof becomes longer. To the intuitionistic, yeah, where, where it gets much longer. Can, can the method... Yes, some, uh, some yeah, time, some, sometimes one can, uh, one can show that. So there are some transformations which, which so let's for example start with the simplest rest of the kind that would be the embeddings. So uh, for example the so-called Kuroda embedding, so this is uh, the Kivenko plus double negation like quantifiers and you don't know. The Kuroda embedding doesn't make it longer, not very long. However, the girl Gensen translation seems to make it, as I cannot prove it, but my, my impression is in this In indigenous uh, So I think uh, there, there, are, there are, in fact, uh, the cases where this, where, this is, uh, where this is very, is in a certain sense very, very true. Uh, also, I have to say, the most extreme case was about a, 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 a thing, but I could not solve it, was the following observation. Uh, in, if you use epsilon calculus, you can make a, a epsilon theorem over a, a proof where all tautologies are allowed. There is nothing comparable, uh, so the bound doesn't depend on the tautologies, let's say so. There is nothing comparable known for intuitionistic logic. Because everything doesn't work and no, no comparisons yet. So it could be that there is a certain type of, 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 of problems where, which are classically intuitionistically provable, where you can, can uh, uh, for that reason, have a witness in classic logic which is short. Also, the same thing is proven, but the integer is not short because, uh, of course, the cut free proof, the Herbert discharge limits the witness. Yeah? But if it is enormous, the witness is also uh, uh, not, not limited. So I think there are a lot of such phenomena, and, and also, I'm also not, uh, not uh, I would say, uh, uh, too much. Uh, I, I think if we really want, are interested in the constructivism, not in the intuitionistic logic. I'm not even sure that intuitionistic logic is the is best, best tool to use for exactly that reason. Because uh, the main source of complexity is, is always this interplay of the quantifier and the propositional proposition things. And maybe we are not interested in the interplay for the production practice, I don't know. So 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 uh, the name to say interplay in the step and all of course style examples where you get uh, two exponents non elementary parts, but uh, it is always uh, implication with a universal point. Yes. Right? Yes. So one might think of just allowing one of these things to happen, or n of these things. Yeah, to but, but one should say, say the basic example is typically an example in intuitionistic logic. So in classic logic, mm -hmm. one can take the same example and shift the quantifiers that needs additional cuts. Then you have the quantifiers out and then in. And in intuitionistic logic, I did not say this, but you know, statement is example well. Uh, this is a proof what I have said today that you cannot formulate any example 
in intuitionistic logic where the quantifiers are polemics on the yeah. basis right. of statement zero. Statement has no word. Yeah. I mean, what I just wanted to say is that this insistence on the pre-next forms is inappropriate for, say, minimal logic, and why one might look for other measures of complexity, and that would be nesting of yes. implications yeah. involving you. Yeah. That, 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 that I think, and, and also one can give uh, a mathematical interpretation to the whole thing. So, uh, so uh, of course, this is not, uh, not nothing that can be really stated, but think that we have a, a strong dislike of, of premix formulations of things. So the humans have a strong dislike. And so maybe in such phenomena, in some explanation. I have a technical question. Is there any connection uh, to the so elementary cut-elimination in proposition in initial learning? Because I noticed that you use, for example, the elimination rule for implication, just in Gensen's form, instead of saying the Scribble-Myers tricky one, which makes it uh, operator elementary. Yeah, that, I, there is one thing to say. The form I have chosen is, is pro probably not the best one if you have only intuitionistic proposition logic. But in that case, it was the elimination of uh, propositional cuts in an otherwise in an otherwise cut free first order proof. Yes. And for that reason you cannot use this good my arguments. Yes? Because you have somehow to move within the truth. Okay. This is exactly what I have done. Other questions? Yes. Okay, let's uh, thank you.